still want an excellent speech. Excellent. Um, I've got a clue who this next person is that we've, uh, we've got to uh, speaking. Um, right, Bill is the, to go through a few things, Vice President of League Against Cruel Sports. Uh, there's been a League Against Cruel Sports to one of our sponsors. Um, Bill is a bird watcher, broadcaster, actor, television presenter, writer, songwriter, musician, and a conservationist. And this goes, just goes on and on. Um, Spring Watch and Autumn Watch uh, has just not been the same since Bill's uh, left no, that. Um, you know, you missed that touch of dry humour that he used to put to it. Um, and certainly British Wildlife owes a great deal to Bill. Here he is, Bill Oddy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I never know what dry humour is. What, what, what have they got now? Wet humour? Is it? You've seen it. I haven't really watched the bloody thing anymore these days. Anyway, um, first of all, I have to announce that this uh, event has actually already broken a record. Something that's never, ever happened before. Because, as you probably realise, there were quite a number of speakers due on this uh, on this stage. Um, there's still more to come, but there were quite a lot. And I, as being one of them, was sent a great big list right? and timings of when we would be on. And a little cautionary email came with this list saying, well, you're due on at one o'clock, but the police insist that the march begins at 1.30. Uh, so chances are we'll be way behind by then, so you'll have to cut your whole speech. <laughs> well, coming to Birmingham for that. And I was quite hoping I would. But this incredible thing has happened. The first time there's ever been a rally like this with people who spoke about subjects like politics even and they haven't overrun <laughs> i think what's happening is they're getting bored stiff of listening to themselves actually so they're getting quicker <laughs> <laughs> it's not serious time, folks. Uh, actually, this, uh, no, and so many people have reminded me, actually, is a nostalgia trip. That's one of the reasons I've come along today, particularly, because I was, in fact, uh, very much brought up in Birmingham. And um, that was, oh, I don't know, late 40s when I first moved here, and all the way through to the time I went off to university, I lived and went to school in Birmingham. Of course, in those days, um, it was a fantastic centre of wildlife, even even where we stand, because every evening you could come down to the centre of Birmingham and see this wonderful starling roost around the buildings here. Um, I got a funny feeling the starlings aren't quite so keen on that thing over there, but sadly it doesn't happen anymore. Uh, nevertheless, I would go out to the countryside, go that way, down the Hankley Road, out to Quinton, and I'd soon be in a bit of greenery over there, and I used to see lots of birds there, lapwings and, um, and skylarks and so on and so forth. And nowadays, I'm sad to say, I, will, I know from talking to people uh, in this area and from also visiting, revisiting myself, many of those birds and other wildlife have and stay out, who's coming in there? Um, and um, have have diminished, you know, it's, it's a sad fact that is, is the case. But one thing, and it's been nice to introduce a little bit of, uh, let's say, optimism or encouragement in the proceedings, one thing that has actually improved enormously, the actual places that I would go bird watching, for example, out at Bittle Reservoirs over that way, anybody who lives around here will know what I mean, Barclay Reservoirs up that way, Upton Warren out towards Droit Witch, there's a couple out towards um to a Brandon near uh, near Coventry. There's any amount of places which in my day were not official nature reserves, but they are now. And the wildlife is extremely profuse on those reserves. And if nothing else, if you're ever trying to look for a little bit of a consolation, um, just think that it, the reason the wildlife on the reserves, at least, is better is because of the work of the various NGOs. 
Some of them here today, but probably not so many here today, because those are, they were, it, it seems conservation this side um, and animal welfare that side, and they never seem to get together properly. And I wish they would do more, actually, because, let's face it, destroying habitat is a cruel thing to do. You're depriving those animals of somewhere to live and their food and so on and so forth. So I'd like to see more cooperation like that. And I've actually thought of another little bit of... Um, Co uh, cooperation that uh, I don't know whether this might kick this off right now because the other thing um, coming here that reminded me coming back here that reminded me was um, I, I used to be a very avid fan of jazz concerts down at the uh, at the town hall around the corner still standing I'm happy to say and um, and also of movies back in those days there's logic here, but back in those days, I was a big fan of the MGM musicals. Now, people of a certain age are going, oh, yes, I remember those, and others of you are going, what the bloody hell is he talking about? Well, MGM musicals, lavish musicals, I just remember one or two of them, such as uh, Calamity Jane, and Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, terrific songs, terrific um, singing, etc. And the one I really remember, and when I was thinking about this today, I thought, wow, yeah, that's just like this. There's a message. There's a message in this one. Oklahoma. Let's face it, whenever you come to Birmingham, you think, Oklahoma, don't you? It brings it back to you. You remember those songs, those marvellous songs, of walking up the bull ring and singing, uh, uh, Oh, what a beautiful morning, walking the bull ring again. But it looked a lot different in those days. But the one song which I think is relevant to today and the subject of cooperation was a song called, and it was one faction um, in the in the town in Oklahoma and, uh, and another faction who potentially would sort of um, be rivals, but they had the nous back in the 40s and whenever it was written to realize because they were country people, and they needed to work together. And the farm was, and the song was, Oh, the farmer and the cowman should be friends. Oh, the farmer and the cowman should be friends. One man likes to push a plow, and the other one likes to chase a cow. But there's no reason that they can't be friends. <laughs> and, now, you see, let, let us raise our voices and sing that to all these factions who would get together with well, the farmers would still be in there wouldn't they so we want to let the marchers down the farmers should be friends that'd be good and the politicians and um who else should be friends but you know what i mean anyway that's the key thing and we're due to go walking those of us who can which probably doesn't include me at the moment but um if we want an uplifting song with a serious meaning, because, and this little bit is serious, I think it's a great shame that we have actually, the events of the last two or three years, have polarised these things so much, and I think particularly as it happens when it comes to farmers, because I know when I was a kid living round here, the farmer basically just tried to kick you off his land for no particular reason, it's what farmers did, you know, they didn't have much to do, and once they've filled the pond in or something like that, they come out and they kick any schoolboys off their land or put some more barbed wire up or something like that, and they were sort of an enemy. Then we went through a period where I think farmers were much more hip to wildlife in general and to their responsibilities. These were the days of FWAG, Farming and Wildlife Advisory Group. And I remember going to a big meeting in, in Norfolk with a lot of farmers and people advising them what to do uh, with their farms. And I asked a good friend of mine who owned owns a huge farm actually uh, and I said you know are farmers against wildlife or not or what you know what's their attitude and I can't remember the exact percentages he said well he said there's there's about I don't know 10 15 percent of us who really are interested 
You know, because, let's face it, potentially, a chunk of farmland is a wonderful place for wildlife. That's where it's meant to be, you know. And he said, it's a good 15% at least of us are really interested. And we, without any prompting, we will farm accordingly, you know, to encourage not only animals but birds and so on and so forth. Um, he said, there's another sort of, I don't know, I can't give me some exactly here, but about 70 or 80 percent who will do the right thing if you tell them what the right thing is, which is quite an optimistic view. It's in, hence flag the advice coming from ecologists, etc., etc., do this, please. And he said a lot of farmers will happily do it if you can slip them a bit of a sort of a, an incentive payment, even better. And then he said there's about 10 percent who are totally bloody minded. And unfortunately, that is certainly true. But has it actually increased? Because if it hasn't increased, surely that means there is potentially a lot more understanding and a lot more tolerance amongst farmers than perhaps we give them credit for. And the thing I think we've been grave danger over this last year is polarizing us and them us and them you know and let's face it it's you're not going to achieve anything by just with the greatest respect but us going around with the right people singing the right songs wearing the right costumes and the right t-shirts that's you know it's good it's a good show of solidarity but in the long run all these different factions which all have their bit of power need to get together and that's my little wish. I have no idea how we achieve it, but I'm sure there are some people here who can. It's now March time, March times, and don't forget your song. I don't want you marching through Birmingham shouting at people, because I know some of you intend to. Shout the badges, shout the badges, shout the badges. Shut up, for Christ's sake. You know, doesn't do any good. Go along saying, you know, the, the marchers and the farmers must be friends. Yes, they must. <laughs> Free cuddle. Yes, absolutely. Much better movement. <laughs> Have a good time. I'm bloody freezing now. Thank you very much.